Hi guys and welcome back to episode 9 of the In The Hub podcast with me, Neil Facker. Today we'll be speaking with Mike Ransom of MCR Broadcast Hire. Mike holds an incredible 30-year career specialising in broadcast equipment hire and rental, working to deliver events like the Olympics and the World Cup on a global scale. You can get in touch with MCR Broadcast Hire over at mcr.tv. Hope you enjoyed this episode. How are you today, Mike? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks very much. Yes. Good stuff. So we'll get straight into the questions then, if that's all right with you then, Mike. Yep, no problem. Cracking. So, Mike, how did you get started in the broadcasting and media industry? Did you always plan on getting involved in this industry? God, what a question. It goes back many, many years. No, I um, I actually left school back uh, a very long time ago at 16, and I took up a, an apprenticeship within a company called uh, REW Video, who at the time is one of the biggest video dealers um, actually in Europe. Initially started on audio side on day release, working on such things as uh, ferrographs and uh, Revox tape machines, which um, probably doesn't mean much to you, um, but in those days was state of the art. Sort of moved through the company, early days of black and white half inch videotape uh, and Philips cassette machines. And um, yeah, did, did my city and guilds and um, moved into sort of sales probably four years later, as I really didn't like engineering as such, sitting at bench every day, and really then sort of move around the industry from there. So obviously you were talking about tapes and stuff like that, and whilst it might not mean so much to me, you, you know, how have you seen the broadcast equipment rental and higher landscape change over time? Well, I think um, rental has always been there. I mean, it's been there. I, I can remember my, my very first company that had a rental department, and rental is something that is always the additional requirement. The customer doesn't have enough of something. For, from that point of view, I mean, obviously, as a rental business or somebody involved in rental, it, is, it, it has to move with the times. It has to move with the different format changes, the advancements in technologies. As I say, you know, I started on, on half-inch black and white um, Sony reel-to-reel -reel machines and um, the early day Philips uh, cassette machines right through. So these days we were talking about IP uh, through the digital change. So, you know, it's, um, you just got to move with it. You just got to move with it. And, and, and in some respects in rental, you have to take the gamble on product. You actually have to um, look at what's coming up, be on top of new technology, uh, hence why it's so important to, to, to attend exhibitions, et cetera, to see what these manufacturers are developing. Over the years, I think we've helped lots of manufacturers and manufacturers have become aware uh, of just how rental companies um, can help them get a product into market where maybe they don't have significant market share. Uh, we've worked with some of the biggest manufacturers or I have worked with some of the biggest manufacturers over the years where we'll take a product from them maybe on a shared revenue basis. Um, because at the end of the day, the end user, the end client, when he gets to a point where he can justify purchasing that product, he will purchase it, um, which might mean we will rent less equipment to them, but usually it means we will be the supplier of the additional requirements when they have a large event or a large job on. So um, that's something I've done pretty successfully with, with lots of manufacturers over the last 30 years. I can, you know, I can go back 25, 30 years ago, then the rental companies were just that. We were rental companies in support of the industry. Uh, but I think the, the importance of, of companies like ourselves has become far more important to, to those manufacturers. As I say, some of these are big, well-established companies who are maybe branching off into a certain area. Um, and they come to companies like us for support. Um, we're not always willing to say, yes, you know, hand over the cash, we'll take the product, but work with us. Um, and we hopefully will give you more users who are potentially buyers of your product. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think our industry is one where in particular people should be really willing to embrace change and, and move with the times and innovate and stuff like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't stand still. Yeah. You can't stand still. Yeah. I think, I, you know, in the, in the last couple of years, we've seen real movement into remote production. Um, and, you know, I was a bit sceptical at the beginning, um, but now we're seeing these very large events 
the, the main hub is could be thousands of miles away from the actual action. So yeah, you, you've got to move with it. But but for us, us as a rental business, the good thing is you still need the camera, the glass. I do think at some of these events where it is a remote production, you do lose um, the adrenaline rush of, of being on site, of actually being at the event. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have been to lots of different type of major events, mostly sporting events over the years. And, and you really do, you know, you really do get into it. Yeah. Um, so uh, once again, I hate to bring it up, but how has, you know, the coronavirus or COVID-19 impacted the business that you guys do at MCR Broadcast Hire? <laughs> how have you overcome the well, challenges? In hindsight, um, if we knew there was going to be a, a virus, as far as this company is concerned, as we only started 12 months ago, and then, of course, we got to March and had a lockdown for four and a half months, um, wasn't the best of starts. Um, and, I, you know... I, I think I don't think people realise the impact that the virus has had on sporting events, pop festivals, you name it. It's 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 critical. It's critical for lots of individuals as well, especially within the freelance market. And hopefully, you know, maybe over the next four, five, six months, we can start to see more events happening under obviously government guidelines and see a, a sort of resurrection of the industry um but it's it's been difficult very difficult so it goes much deeper than the surface level of obviously you're thinking you know stadiums losing income um broadcasters as well mm. you, you really got to think about that deeper behind the scenes kind of action as well haven't you well you know where rental companies are uh, concerned you, you very much have i mean for, a, for, a, for this industry and the events industry i mean it is based on freelance personnel and these, these freelance engineers riggers whatever have have, have had no income yeah. no income at all so i mean going back to well i presume happier times do you have any kind of memorable experiences when dealing with the huge events like the olympics uh, world cups or, or the euros oh yes yeah um our first big involvement oh uh, my big inf- uh, involvement was um at the athens olympics which really then was topped by the London Olympics. Um, yeah. we, we had two major contracts there, uh, and uh, not not as MCR as my previous company. And yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. It, it's hard work, many, many days, uh, prep, install, and then 17 days of uninterrupted 24-hour transmission is, is you know, you, you've got to take your hats off to the, to the to the techies to the engineers who get these things together yeah, amazing amazing yeah I, I remember being kind of a kid and being in absolute awe of you know the scheduling as well so you'd have whole days where it's just a non-stop uninterrupted coverage of, of multiple different sports and I, i'd just be in awe at the you know the organization that must have gone into it and the uh, the manpower uh, yeah ab- absolutely absolutely to go from sort of green side say the uh, the london olympics the green side to put it on what I believe is probably and maybe I'm biased as I'm I'm English uh, <laughs> the best show I've ever seen fabulous fabulous yeah yeah definitely so if you could deliver a message to yourself 10 years ago let's say you, you know what would you tell yourself and, and how would you prepare yourself for the next decade in broadcasting very deep question um it is a little bit for 8am in the morning isn't it I think it's uh, it's about being aware of what your customers are looking for, Um, being aware of the tech and the changes in the tech and keeping up with that. Um, Be prepared. I mean, it's it's very difficult. It's very difficult. There's there's lots of great companies, suppliers, manufacturers out there who are bringing products out that potentially you could see, you know, a a market where um, you could get involved in, um, and it's being flexible. I think you have to be flexible. Yeah, I think that's a really good shout, Mike. So uh, what do you see as the future for the broadcasting and media industry? And we, we usually tend to ask guests to keep this to one word, if possible. I know it's quite a vague question, but... Change. Change. I like it. Mm. I like it. I think I, that's a good I, one. I really do think you just got to be prepared. I mean, it's just not one word, but you have to be prepared for change and you've got to be flexible. You've got to be able to manoeuvre quickly um and keep on top of things yeah 100 completely agree so i mean 
Have you guys got any exciting projects going on at MCR at the moment that you can talk to us about, or is it is it quite hush? At the moment, it's a, it's a slow build up. It's it's sort of picking up from where we left off uh, uh, the day lockdown came. We're building up, contacting customers. It's not easy to go and see customers at the moment. So lots of Zoom meetings, lots of emails, yeah. um, and just building that up again. And and you know I've got to say we we've, we've uh, you know things are building up month by month, which is good. Which is good. That's yeah, really good to hear, Mark. So if anyone wants to get in touch with you um, and find out anything about what you guys are up to at MCR, where can they best do that? Well, I mean I think our, our website, as you said earlier, is pretty comprehensive. It, it shows you everything we do, but uh, do call in. Uh, all the contact details are on the website, and talk to one of the higher resource guys, and and talk, let's talk about your project and what you need, and and we'll try and help you. So I mean that that's absolutely everything. So thanks for taking the time out to speak to us this morning. No problem. I really appreciate it. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye.